Oh. Bear Hands Paran has been tamed. <laughs> Literally just. They forced me to wear bike gloves. They're like, well, I guess we'll just give the booth to Michael for a while. <laughs> so here's the problem I have with gloves. <laughs> Is you can't grab anything. I mean, this restricts how much strength you have. You know what they say, you find yeah. a problem, make a solution, and you got a good product. Oh, okay. So well, look. We so need to make some gloves. So here's the problem. You can't feel Here's anything. the solution. Bare hands, baby. So is this like being at like a big toy convention for you or? Oh, this is totally like being at a big toy convention. It's like I want one of everything, <laughs> you know? We've been officially kicked out of the wildlife control supplies booth. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been great. Go, go see someone else. So we are at the 2022 Wildlife Expo put on by the National Wildlife Control Association. And we're at the Wildlife Control Supplies booth and there's quite a few products that I really, really like here. We have been buying products from Wildlife Control Supply for the last decade and they're really, really good people. They cater both to the professional and to the homeowner. But I'm really excited to show you guys some of the products they have. They got some new products out and they've got some new and improved products. So let's take a look at them. People usually come in contact with raccoons, skunks, possums. This trap is perfect for all three of those. This particular trap is their skunk trap and it's a seven by seven trap. We're gonna look at a couple of other traps they have here too. So let me point out a few features of this especially for any homeowner that might be uh, looking at some of these traps like well, why not I just get a save a heart trap well here's the thing you're gonna have your home for a lot of times and people usually come in contact with raccoons skunks possums this trap is perfect for all three of those some of the things that I really like about this trap that I just want to point out is that you do have a rear release door you can actually take this wherever your state will allow you to translocate an animal or if you take it to the animal control shelter, they can open up this that door, you can set it up there and you can walk away from the trap and let the animal exit on his own. Shelf right here is made of thick steel. See the gauge of steel there? That's got to be what, 18 gauge or something? It's really, really thick, so that door is not gonna come off. The other thing I like about this trap is this pan stabilizer right here. It's made out of very, very stiff wire, and so that's not gonna bend. A raccoon's not gonna bend that whenever he gets in there. And what it does is it prevents this pan from coming up all the way so that a raccoon can't pull it and then tear your pan up. Lever actuator, and the way it's secured right here, you see these really thick um, ringlets right there? That prevents the, uh, this actuator arm from being pulled back by a raccoon. And then it's got heavy duty, a heavy duty door and spring. See the gauge of metal that they use here? And then the, the, the gauge of the spring? This metal is really thick. It's way thicker than what you can find on a standardized trap. That's gonna prevent your door from being crushed by a raccoon. Raccoons are really strong. And some of the cheaper traps that you can find on the market, especially if you go to tractor supply or farm supply, they're very, very thin. And what happens is the raccoons grab the side of the door and they pull on it and they actually cave the door in. You're not gonna have that happen with this, with this really stiff steel reinforcement right there. The way the dog actuates and holds the, the, uh, the door open right here, this action is really, really smooth. I mean, I'm barely gonna put any weight on it. That's a really, really smooth action. Let's do that again so you can catch it. All right, so really, really smooth action work. I mean, that is really smooth. I do like the fact that you see the the, um, the gaps right here, the cage wire, that's half inch and that's one inch. So the skunk can't put his paw through and pull a lot of dirt into the trap. It's a big problem that we have with skunks. Once they get captured, they'll stick their hands through and they just fill a trap up full of dirt. All those things make it an excellent trap and excellent for a homeowner to have, but also just the way this trap is constructed, it's gonna last the life of a, of a homeowner's needs. So this is Wildlife Control Supplies Squirrel Trap. This is their professional grade trap, which is an excellent trap for a homeowner to have because it's got smaller holes and it's got stiffer wire and it's got stiffer reinforcements all the way around, which means the trap's gonna last longer. Basically the same trigger mechanism. It's got a pan, actuator arm, dog, and then door. 
What's the benefit or the downfall of just an average person trapping and doing these things themselves? Well, the, the, the downfall is, I mean, there's certain things that a homeowner can do themselves. Um, the problem is, I, I spent my entire life doing wildlife control and working with wildlife, like Michael. Um, I grew up as a child, you know, working with wildlife. But, you know, people have to worry about, you know, human health and safety, zoonotic diseases. The other thing is, is it's not always that easy. Sometimes you'll get animals that are D difficult to trap they're trap shy in which case you know I do recommend you hire a professional um, like you know wildlife command center homeowners cannot tackle all these problems themselves um, some they can some they can you agree Michael yeah so I think where it really comes into is that a homeowner is he's got a career so let's say he's a, a bookkeeper, you know, and he is highly focused on keeping people's books. And when he comes home, he wants to relax, but he can't because there's a squirrel making noise up in his attic space. So he goes and buys a trap and he's going to put it up in the attic and catch the squirrel. And it just doesn't work out because he doesn't pay attention to the signs like we do. I mean, this is what we do. We don't do books. We don't do bookkeeping. We look for the signs of the squirrel's entry exit points. We look at his male, female. Is this a young squirrel, old squirrel? Is it breeding? And the other thing is, you know, like we know better than to try to trap a squirrel in the attic space. Like that just never works out very well. So I think that a lot of tricks to it, we know how to read the animals because it's what we do every day. I really, really want to catch that squirrel. The homeowner, really really just doesn't want it there and so there's a difference in the way we think and so a lot of times um, homeowners have really good intentions they buy the traps and they can catch some of the easier animals but they don't stay on top of it they don't really pursue it they've got life they've got their kids they've got their wife they've got their career all of that and they just want the squirrel gone they just don't want to invest or they can't invest the time it takes to actually pursue the squirrel. One of the things that I do really like about this trap, besides the size and the and the wire holes, I love this hand protector right here, this big plate. So when you grab the trap, you don't have to worry about the squirrel biting you through the through the cage. The other thing I really like about it is this truly is a one-handed set trap. Okay? Because with one hand you, you can grab it right here, you push this back, all right, and then you see how the holes are cut out right here? See how the holes are cut out right here? That's so that you can set it like this. So to go through those motions again, you grab it with your ring finger, you push in with your thumb, you use your index finger to set the, t the trap, and it's a one-handed set. Now you know, the more you know. So we've looked at a couple different traps, but what about the homeowner that doesn't want anything to do with trapping? Like, wants the animal gone, but- so this is called the Wildlife Control Supplies OD. It, it stands for, it's one way door. So the animal, you, you mount this to the opening where the animal's going in, animal comes out, goes out the other side, door comes down, animal can't get back in. The only issue here, and again, Michael and I, you know, having done this our whole lives, we know this animal's gonna try to get back in the house. Um, so if the house has not been animal proofed, um, you're, you're gonna have problems. So if this is a, a skunk under a porch, um, and you're gonna go ahead and, and put a rat wall around that porch, you know, the day after. Wait, most of our consumers don't know what a rat wall well, is. Well, tell them what a rat wall is. <laughs> so if you have a porch, you know that crack all the way around the edge of the porch where the concrete meets the ground? Yes. And the ground dehydrates and it separates, all right? Well, you come in and you screen that off or you use a mortar cement mixture and you seal that off all the way around except one exit point, all right? At that exit point where the animal is entering and exiting, you mount this one-way door. And that way the animal has no choice but to come out through this part right here. Now it, it might take them a day, two days. I've seen skunks that take 18 days to come out. But they will come out and once they come out, they push their way through here. And then they'll go feed, they'll go get water, they'll come back, they're gonna go, they're gonna try to get back in. They're gonna try to get back in here, but because the, the weight of the animal is stepping on this little uh, bin out right here, he can't lift this gate. 
and so that's going to prevent it. So best case scenario, and what we all hope for, is the skunk just gives up and goes away. Now, we know that if it's a female skunk and she has young underneath that porch, she's not going to do that. Yeah, you should not use this product if you think there's any young present, um, because the young are obviously, you know, going to be abandoned. Um, they're going to die. This should only be used, you know, outside of the maternal season. So. Yeah, so you really wouldn't want to use this in the springtime. No. One, the ethics of it. It's not ethical to separate an, a lactating nursing female from her young. But also the headache it's going to create because most raccoons and skunks will not stop until they get back in to their young somehow, some way, some form. Whether that means tearing everything up in their path, they will. I mean, tell me some of the raccoon damage you've seen where a uh, female I've, tries to get back in into it. I've seen raccoons literally go through the roof, like through the roofing. Tearing the shingles off, getting down to the wood, eating through the wood to get back inside the, uh, an attic space, like that much. And then if this doesn't work, uh, they can call a professional like Wildlife Command Center and, um, and we'll come out and we'll figure out a complete solution. And if you don't want this anymore, we'll take this with us. <laughs> Maybe a bit off topic, but it's gonna come into mind here. You guys are professionals, you're operators. Does a standard consumer need any type of licensing or permit or? No, but there, well, there will be laws in your state. It, they may state that you can't move an animal. Um, it, may, it may state that you can't trap a certain animal. Uh, maybe you have to hire a professional. Definitely check your, your state laws. Yeah, there, there are a lot of municipalities that have special laws for wildlife. There's a lot of states that have specific laws to protect wildlife. Uh, state of California, if you catch a mammal, you have to euthanize it. You can't even turn it loose in your own home. The state of California has the strictest laws when it comes to an animal that is captured. From the political standpoint, in California, it's like the public decided they didn't want leg hold traps. But the biologists were in charge to say, hey, we are not translocating or relocating any mammal captured. In the bigger scheme of things, once you capture an animal, at that moment, biologists in general consider that animal removed from the breeding pool. It is no longer a wild animal in their eyes. And so the state of California, I think, did a good job in getting that law passed where if you catch it, has to be euthanized. So in St. Louis, we have an operator that has based his whole business off of no trapping. And so the only thing he does, he, he considers, he really pushes the fact that he is humane. He's humane. Everything he does is with one-way doors. Now, the hypocrisy in this is that it's a little unethical if you're separating a lactating nursing female from their young. And so with this particular operator, it happens a lot because we get called in because there's young, young animals crying in the walls. You know, everything has its pros and cons. So yeah, he doesn't trap animals. So what's worse, trapping animals or separating females from their own? I don't know. Or keeping them in your house forever. You could keep them in your house forever. You do have to worry about zoonotics, but I mean, it is an option. I've never set this trap before. It looks crazy and intimidating. Yeah, there's two different models of tube traps here. Uh, both of them are pretty intimidating. These are def definitely lethal traps, and typically they're used for squirrels, but originally they were designed for mink. This is the wildlife control supplies version, and this is a different professional version. The difference that I see immediately between these two is that this one seems to be easier to set and it has a pan tension setting on it. So we'll take a look at both of them. Uh, this is the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, it works off of, this is your kill bell. And we've talked about kill bells on rat traps. So reference back to our rat trap video so you can see what the kill bell is all about. But with this trap, you set it down this is a safety right here. This is your dog. This is your pan. This is your kill bell. And so the way this sets is you flip this over this. And now the trap is set. You can put the safety on while you're messing with it. 
And what happens is the animal comes in like this and he hits the pan and this bell will flip over and smash the animal. This is a very violent trap. It works really well. So when it steps on hiss, you ready? Yep. Wow, like barely even could see it move. Like it, it went, went so that, fast. Yeah. Yeah. Not sticking my hand in this one. Not even gonna ask. Now, this one sets pretty much the same way. It's a lot easier to set. And also, you can adjust the tension of this pan with this little tension adjuster right here. This is safety on, this is safety off. You push the bar over, and when you push it down, this catches your kill bar. The animal comes along, hits the pan, and catches it right like that. So if you really want to take care of your animal quickly, this is pretty humane because they're not getting out of this or getting away from it. I love it. Um, I do. I, I do like that you can adjust the tension of the pan. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, but that's about as easy as it gets. Yeah. You know. So this is a prototype. It's a prototype. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's set. Yeah. That's pretty simple. Love it. Way easier to set than this one. Yeah. So for a homeowner's perspective, this would be the way to go. So for these tube traps, uh, Wildlife Control Supplies makes these caps, these end caps. And the end caps are good for a couple of different things. One, if you want to um, conceal and not have the neighbors looking in the trap to see the dead squirrel, then you put the cap on it facing the neighbor. You put the trap in place facing the hole where the animal's coming in and out of. That way when the animal gets captured, you can't look inside the trap and see a, a caught animal. Now, if you <clears throat> were trying to catch smaller animals, you can use these caps, which are, you know, for your, your, your rats and red squirrels and chipmunks type thing. Put those on place. And then the other thing that's nice about them is you can screw them down right here screw them in place. Do you guys have these types of traps? Like, do you use these types or no? Yes, at uh, Wildlife, Con Wildlife, Con wait, what's the name of my company? Yeah, what's your company What's, what's my company's name? What's the channel uh, name? Wildlife, the Wildlife Command Center. Yeah, yeah, nailed it. We do use these types of traps, um, especially when we're dealing with difficult squirrels. These seem to work really well. The squirrels that have been captured before and then the neighbor caught them and took them a mile down the way and turned them loose in the park and they came back. Uh, so the squirrels are trap, trap shy. They understand that that cage wire has a negative connotation with it. This trap has a smooth surface and so they don't associate that with the negative uh, of a cage wire trap. So is this like being at like a big toy convention for you or? Oh, this is totally like being at a big toy convention. It's like I want one of everything, <laughs> you know? We've officially taken over the whole booth at the wild. <laughs> like, uh, the wildlife control supply booth has been completely taken over by Wildlife Command Center. The bad thing is, they haven't had a single customer besides us in here for like two hours. <laughs> Bare Hands Paran has been tamed. <laughs> really just They've forced me to wear bike gloves. They're like, well, I guess we'll just give the booth to Michael for a while. <laughs> They forced me to wear bike gloves. Greg said he couldn't be in here unless he wore gloves. So you know, <laughs> so here's the problem I have with gloves. <laughs> Is you can't grab anything. I mean, this restricts how much strength you have. You know what they say, you find yeah. a problem, make a solution, and you got a good product. Oh, okay, so well look, so. We need to make some gloves. So here's the problem. You can't feel it. Here's anything? the solution. Bare hands, baby. Not long ago, we released a video on all the different types of rat traps, and you saw me sticking my fingers inside rat traps. Well, this is a docking station for rat traps. Remember we were talking about the rat traps jumping? Well, this is one type of solution for that. It's got some magnets on the back, and so the magnets will stick to the metal. And so it's two things. One, it prevents jump, but the other thing is if 
you're after rats, and the only place you can mount a rat trap is on a steel I-beam. They'll stick straight to the I-beam. And rats will go to it? Actually, the rats are even easier to catch like this because the they're holding on to whatever beam they're on or whatever, and they're trying to get to the bait, and so they're less cautious, and they, they hit this thing and they snap it right away. In the rat video of ours, go back a couple of videos and check it out. Yeah, yeah, here, watch Michael getting his hand snapped by this trap. Yeah, you know, we also did, uh, we, we talked about what's safe for your pet and what's not safe for your six-year-old, you well, know? Do you want to talk about this case? I know you're, you're kind of digging that. This is a multi-catch uh, trap station. And the way it works is you bait your traps, then you screw your traps in place, okay? You set them. And the baffles here prevent one trap from springing the next trap. You might set this out to catch ground squirrels or chipmunks. The animals enter here. It's got an entry on the other side too. Yep, it's got an entry yeah. on the other side here. They come in, they smell all of this wonderful bait, because now you got four traps that are baited, so they smell all this wafting wonderfulness. They come in, they move into the station, and this one gets caught in this trap, but it doesn't trip these traps. And so the next one comes in, the next mouse, chipmunk, rat, squirrel, whatever you're after, comes in. This is an excellent setup for flying squirrels, red squirrels, black rats, and brown rats. And then if you don't want your kids to get into it, you just put a little lock right here. And now it's very child-proof and very pet-friendly. Unless, of course, your pet is like a boa constrictor and it can just crawl right through there. Now watch that. We've been officially kicked out of the wildlife control supplies booth. <laughs> well, it's been great. Go, go see someone else. Go We're gonna go. Let's go see Bird Barrier. Yeah, go see Bird Barrier. Thanks, Greg. We'll You're welcome. Them. I appreciate you, Greg. Thanks a, a pleasure. lot. Pleasure. It's good meeting you. Well. I'll be back around. All right, sounds good. Michael. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for letting us oh, video everything. Yeah. Can you just like hold it kind of diagonal for it? Oh, it'll mm. take it out. Yeah. Keeps us unpackaged their products, Michael. Hey, nobody around to stop me. <laughs>